Hey, Integrity friends, it's Bud again. We're back uh, with Marshall Bullard, who I introduced to you in yesterday's video. And people are going to wonder, Marshall, why it's another day <laughs> and you and I don't change clothes. You reckon? Is, is that it? Yeah. It's because of quarantine. Quarantine. Yeah, quarantine. quarantine. <laughs> we don't have access to our clothes. That's right. That's a great point. That's probably it. So, so anyway, but no, we're, we're doing this stuff all together and just kind of get bringing it to you on, on three consecutive days. And yesterday we left you with uh, a, a promise that we're going to talk today about this dispensation of promise and understand a little bit more about the spiritual nature of the promise that God gave to Abram, who would become, obviously, the father of the Jewish nation. He was the first Hebrew, and he was the one that God would use to build that, that nation of Israel, that the Israelites, the Jews, the chosen people that he would become. And Jesus would come out of the lineage yes. of, of Abram, right? right. He, was a, he, was a Jew, he was a Jew, and... Uh, that says a lot about God's plan for, for human history. Yeah. And now, now, one of the things that you had told me was that you, and, and you kind of read stuff a little deeper than I do, so uh, you had an experience reading some stuff from that, uh, that author, A.W. Tozer, who yeah. is just one yeah. of the incredible speakers, Absolutely. Uh, or writers and you know, communicators when it comes to spiritual truth. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit, what it kind of hit you when you were reading that. Well, one thing, uh, I love uh, his book, The Pursuit of God, and mm -hmm. I happen to just be looking back over that this morning uh, in chapter 4, um, and he, what he's talking about is how we often separate spirituality from reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and he says, you know, ultimately you can't do that. Spirituality is reality, right? Yeah, we, yeah, can, yeah. we can sell a, a, or, or separate spiritual from uh, material, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can separate uh, temporal from eternal, yeah. but you cannot separate spirituality from reality. Mm. And what we often do, we're often more focused, obviously, on the material things yeah. uh, because they are... We're, they're tangible. Mm -hmm. We can see them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we use our, our five senses mm -hmm. most of the time to experience those things. Right. Um, and the reality mm -hmm. is, right, that our uh, is faith, right? Yeah. Um, the Bible says about faith um, that faith is being sure of what we hope for yeah. and certain of what we do not see. In fact, the Apostle Paul says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that we are called as believers to mm -hmm. walk by faith, not, not by, by sight. sight. Right? Yeah. So this is a major thing going on right now in respect yeah. to the times in which we live. Absolutely. Bud, because yeah. Uh, yeah. even going back to the writings of C.S. Lewis, mm -hmm. you know, he says basically, and I'm really probably butchering this, but forgive me, mm -hmm. you'll hopefully get the point. But when things are good, you hear a whisper from God. When things are bad, you can hear him, right? And he says that God often uses pain, difficulty, or trials as a megaphone oh, wow. to get our yeah. attention, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I believe uh, we're in those times now, and I believe yeah. you can see that as you look at things going on across the world. And uh, I was looking at a video yesterday of people in the streets just crying out to God in Italy, right? Uh -huh. And so uh -huh. I see people who may not have been very um, spiritual people at all, yeah. calling and crying out to God, right? And that's God's people. Since we're here in Abraham and we're looking at this covenant that God made with Abram mm -hmm. in Genesis chapter 12, do you know what God called uh, people early on? They were no How they were known yeah. before we knew them as the Jews? They were known in Genesis chapter 4 as people who called on the, called name, upon of the, the name of the Lord. Lord. Right, Absolutely. yeah. And it's so exactly that's, right. what, that's what we see going yeah. on right now. And so I think it is just a wonderful time to look at God's covenant here in Genesis chapter 12. Yeah, that's good. Have you got it there? Yeah, I do. Go you ahead. want me to read well, this? Well, let me just say, yeah. you, know, you mentioned C.S. Lewis, who mm -hmm. was probably the f maybe one of the first per writer, at least in relatively modern history, who really went <laughs> deep into the area of spiritual warfare, right? right. Screw tape letters sure. and all that. Sure. And it's funny because I tell my congregation that um, in order for me to try to stay in better touch with that spiritual reality, which mm -hmm. is the reality, there's a couple of books that I've read that really impacted me back in the 80s and 90s uh, by Frank Peretti called, oh, yeah. you know, uh, This Present Darkness and Piercing the sure. Darkness. 
I make it a point to read reread one or both of those books every year, yeah. uh, just so that I can try to, to stay in focus with right. that. But but you're so right that this promise that ish ushers in the age of promise, the dispensation of promise, yes. the way God wanted to work with His people mm -hmm. uh, in history was a huge thing. So read that if you don't mind. Absolutely. And, and uh, let's let's take a look at that. Genesis chapter twelve verses one through three. Now the Lord said to Abram. Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. Mm -hmm. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I'll make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Yeah. So, so there's some physical elements Absolutely. with that covenant, right? Absolutely. So, so even when we're thinking about spiritual reality, that that encompasses this idea of, of physical. And so God, God said, "I'll give you land." Absolutely. He said, "I'll give you a big family." Right. Absolutely. Many descendants. Mm -hmm. um, I will give you many possessions. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and in that, where he said, I will bless you, mm -hmm. that that has to do with the Messiah. That's right. Absolutely. Through you, I'm going to bless the world. I'm going to redeem the world, mm -hmm. right? Which is yes. the biggest part of that. So, so there are the physical elements, but the overriding piece there is the spiritual element. Yeah, and oftentimes I would even maybe take it a step further and say, mm -hmm. Some of what we see in the physical is a result of the spiritual. And I can use right. Abraham for an example, right? Yeah. Um, God promised him, right? He promised him a son, right? He mm -hmm. promised him, mm -hmm. you know, that he would make his family as numerous as the sand on the seashore. Yeah. Yeah. Yet he was 100 years of age. Sarah was 90 years old before mm -hmm. They conceived, and so they tried to speed up the process yeah, that, yeah. that God really had for them in, in, in His timing. And they decided uh, for Abram to be with uh, to Hagar, the the maid servant, and then right. Ishmael was born. And so, physically, if you want to talk about physically, then Hagar was a an Egyptian right. slave, maid yep. servant, mm -hmm. and then the nation of Israel, who would come through the lineage of Abram, would be in captivity for over 400 years yep. to Pharaoh in Egypt. Yep, exactly. And, and the, the, the cool thing about that was kind of cool is that, you know, Ishmael also had 12 sons. Yes, he Right? Did. And so yes, you, got, you got Jacob with 12 sons, Ishmael yeah. with 12 sons. Yes, he did. So the Arab nations, as you said, that Egyptian kind that they feel they, they they feel that they have legitimate claim sure. to promises of God sure. because of the twelve sons, and That's they right. would say, "Well, you know, it's really Ishmael's sons, the right. ones who." And, and so that is that was the genesis of this this Arab Israeli conflict right. that we see today in the world. Yes, uh, that that is such a such a big thing ever present. So uh, I want us to, something that you and I have, have talked about before, I, I made a point in a, in a message a few weeks ago that, um, that my illustration was, for example, I'll be driving on the interstate and we'll see uh, trucks and you know, vehicles that are advertising their companies, which they should do, that's yeah. great, it's a marketing tool, obviously. Um, you wear Farm Bureau hats, <laughs> right? And Farm Bureau shirts. Should have a shirt today. Should have worn one today. Yeah, maybe tomorrow when we do this, <laughs> yeah. if we get out of quarantine, we can do that, right? Uh, and, and they'll put things like their safety statistics, sure. which is really cool. It's yeah. good. So I want to work for a safe, a safe company, right? Right. Um, but it, it's always struck me that that tends to be, I think, almost in, in, in uh, moving out of balance, maybe. Sure. When we think of the spiritual and the physical, and, and I said in that message that uh, I think that we have devalued the spiritual aspect of life so much, and we've sure. removed the idea of spiritual reality yes. from our, our national dialogue for the most part. A number of reasons we see that. We see the, you know, the, 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 the prayers being out law in schools, the whole idea of this whole separation of church and state, which is not even, it's not even based on language in the Constitution. Sure. Sure. It's a letter that sure. Jefferson wrote to someone, and that's what is used for that. So anyway, I digress. But um, about the removal of that emphasis from our dialogue mm -hmm. in our society leads to an overemphasis on the physical and therefore on physical health as opposed to spiritual health. 
Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, and you you said that to no, me independently. I, I agree. Yeah, sure. You had the no, same this, thought. This this is yeah. I'm I'm tracking with you here because I I, be, I believe that uh, with all my heart, and I'll tell you why I believe it. Yeah. Just like we talked about yesterday, that all Scripture is is true, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, the Apostle Paul said this. He said, "To live is Christ, but to die." It's game. game yeah. I think you can sum up what you just said with mm -hmm. that statement from mm -hmm. the apostle yeah. because he recognized, spiritually speaking, that you know, uh, you know, you're way better off, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, from a spiritual standpoint, even if right. we're not here, look, this is this is here now. We were created not for time, mm -hmm. which we have here, right, on Earth, mm -hmm. but for eternity. eternity. Right. Right. And that's our home. That's our home. And that's why in the New Testament, how often are we are, are we spoken of as aliens and strangers? Exactly. We're foreigners. Yes. But I don't think we I don't know that we live that way. No, we don't we don't really live that way. We have grown a custom and taken on the custom of the land, much like uh, it's cyclical in nature. So yeah. we see this with the nation of Israel, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we see judges, and then we see the prophets, and it's cyclical in nature, and, and, and we have become accustomed to this world, so much so that we have forgotten um, what the apostle who was closest to Jesus said, the apostle John, he mm -hmm. said, you know, this world and its desires will pass away, mm -hmm. but he who does the will of God will live forever, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, and that's that, that goes back to the whole spiritual truth thing. Yeah. So do you think that what we're going through today with the, the whole COVID-19 kind of thing, and just this this fear factor and there's just this whole thing. I really believe that so much of it is really driven by this, this preoccupation perhaps with physical life and physical safety because when you don't have the spiritual reality and if that's not something that's important, sure. then all you've got left is the, is the physical. Right. No, I, I agree with you. And I think that, you know, as you said, I believe it can be taken to extreme. Obviously, you know, we want to be careful, you know, yeah. naturally oh, speaking. Yeah. We don't want we to do to. things sure. that are going to jeopardize, Absolutely. you know, our family, th things like that. But what you're saying is is this, this you know, is being taken to an extreme. And, and I agree with you. Yeah, and, and, and we should do that. But, and and I, it, it, I would feel much better about it if there were, if we, if we, if, if there was a spiritual message overlaying everything, you know, just like we said, the, the covenant that God gave Abram was a spiritual covenant. Yes. And the spiritual covenant has physical elements. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, and if we saw our lives that way, how much better uh, our world would be? Yeah, absolutely. I, no, I agree wholeheartedly. And I think as well, um, just to add one more thing to our conversation, I know we're running yeah, a little we are over a little time, we're so I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah. Um, you know, I would say this is this is just uh, I forgot what I'm gonna say. Heck, I don't know. Oh, you I did? lost my train of thought. You're like me a lot. Yeah, the ADD <laughs> stuff. Have to, yeah. We'll have to edit that out. <laughs> yeah, take, no, we don't. We don't. We don't edit around here. We just need to take your meds. So uh, you get the ADHD meds. So, so yeah. So, so that's a real good point. Well, what I would ask our folks to do, I want you to to, to recognize and just kind of ask yourself, God, show me the spiritual reality in the midst of all the pain. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's what you were going to yeah, say. Yeah, that's what See, I was going to say. Really, yeah, really you're, you're trying to me. You, you took my ball. Yeah, Take it from here. Take good. it from here. Yeah, so I think that um, with that, I think this is a great opportunity. Yeah. I think it's a great opportunity for the body of Christ. If you're a believer, this is a great. If, if you're not a believer, it, that's okay. This is a great opportunity for you to begin to seek God, right? Mm -hmm. um, in fact, Isaiah prophesied. Seek the Lord while he may still be found, right? And so this, I would say, for the church, for the body of Christ, for those who do not know the Lord, this is an opportunity yeah. to seek the Lord yeah. and to build and create and cultivate a relationship with him. Right. And I would encourage anybody listening or watching to do that today. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, so we're going to do some stuff here in the next few weeks to kind of help you do that, study in the Bible. You're going to help us with that and all that good stuff. And so... Um, Back tomorrow, we'll, we'll get into the dispensation uh, of the law. We'll kind of move into that and see what was going on there with what God did with Moses on Mount Sinai. So have a great rest of the week. God bless.